how's it going y'all? This is Chaz from Classic Komodo, and this is Battlefield Academy, a series where I review all the different types of guns in Battlefield 4 and give you my opinion on them. But I'm changing things up. You know, I was thinking about things and I am not the best reviewer of guns. I can, I can honestly say that. I'm not the best gun reviewer, but I know what I am good at and that is giving my opinion on it. So what I'm going to do is switch things up a little bit, give you a tiny bit of stats, but mostly tell you how the gun feels. And that's what's really important to console players. How does it feel? How is it playing out for us console players? Well, let's get things started. The Type 88 LMG. This thing has some nostalgic moments. It was back in Battlefield 3. Wasn't too shabby, but far from the greatest it was it had like 600 rounds per minute and or something you know really slow rounds per minute not a great damage model stuff like that so for the most part this gun wasn't good in battlefield 3 well battlefield 4 things have changed and this guy looks so hungry so i decided to give a little bit of a sandwich right there and threw it in his face so i had to apologize to him sorry dude but Getting back to the Type 88 LMG and why I find that this LMG is so good. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, LMGs, go screw yourself, LMGs suck. Well, I would mostly agree with you. <laughs> Me, I like to be an aggressive player. I like running and gunning and doing 360 no scopes. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Whoa, Call of Duty player almost there. But no, I like to be a more aggressive player. And uh, in doing so, I don't find that LMGs necessarily play the role. The MG4 is really good at it because of its high rate of fire and stuff like that. But for the most part, these LMGs are more of a support role. They're supposed to be, you know, where you sit back, you bipod it up, and you offer some supporting fire to your allies. That sounds incredibly fun, right? No, I mean, for the most part, everybody's an aggressive player. I don't care who you are. At one point, at most points, you're an aggressive player or you're a recon three billion miles in the backfield trying to get an 8,000 meter no scope headshot for your montage that I'm gonna punch you in the face, you snipers. But getting back to it, the fact that the Type 88 is so good of a gun because it is the jack of all trades of LMGs. Now I'm gonna get to why that is in a second. So the, for the most part, the damage model isn't too stellar on this weapon. It's a 25 max damage, 18 minimum. Well, what that means is four, you know, four shots to kill. So a lot of the other ones actually have a higher damage model, the 34 damage model. Um, harder hitting rounds and they, uh, but they're, they're slower firing. So is, that's not where it's excelling at. Uh, the, you know, the fire rate is only 700 rounds per minute. So it's not the best, but it's not the worst. So you, you, you kind of find this, this medium firing LMG. 700 rounds is nothing to play around with though. Up close and personal, you can take somebody out with 700 rounds. You're going to lose to SMGs, higher rate of fire assault rifles, um, 360 ladder skull no scope guys <laughs> um no but you're gonna lose to a lot of higher rate of fire weapons the 700 rounds per minute is is, is gonna get you killed especially when one-on-one -on -one gun fights when the guy sees you you're directly in front of him y'all at close to medium range you know things get a little hectic but this uh 700 rounds per minute is not too shabby the muzzle velocity on this thing is 600 meters per second that's beastly 600 meters per second is keeping up with the sniper rifles you're shooting sniper rifle bullets <laughs> not, not really because that'd be um you know too easy well too hard you know it'd be too hard for most players no but for the most part you're you're shooting awesome uh, awesome velocity rounds you're, you're shooting them at 600 meters per second you're you you do not have to lead your targets as much unless you're using a suppressor which you see in the background now but for the most part you're going to have a good time when using this weapon at long range um the uh, muzzle velocity is excellent when uh, engaging targets that are running or moving or something like that because you don't have to lead them as much with a higher muzzle velocity. The magazine size, beastly, 200 rounds in the mag, automatically, no attachments, no nothing, 200 rounds. What that means for you is shoot as much as you can. Accuracy for the birds, shoot. <laughs> you have the rounds, use them. So. The 200 rounds is awesome, but there's a downside. There's a, there is a penalty 
for having all this awesome firepower, and that is the reload time. So the reload time on an empty magazine and in a full magazine is seven seconds. So what does that mean for you guys? Well, you uh, are pretty much screwed if you're in the middle of a firefight and you you know run out of ammo. You you have to wait seven seconds. You might as well grab some chips, you know, nachos, cheese, the fixings, whatever you got to camp it out for about seven years, what it feels like, because this thing takes a hell of a long time to reload. It's it's ridiculous, but you get 200 rounds. So for the most part, once you start running out of those 200 rounds, you better find yourself a safe spot or run to some, some friendly, you know, some friendly players because you're going to have a bad time if you don't. So now that we got most of the stats out of the way, the kind of the hard stats that, that are most important. Oh, by the way, this thing is ridiculously, well, not necessarily ridiculously accurate, but it's accurate. It's really, really accurate. And uh, we're gonna go into that in a second on how you should kind of play this gun if you're gonna use it. So let's get back to the things. We got all the stuff down. We got 25 maximum damage. We got a 600 meter per second muzzle velocity, 700 rounds per minute, 200 in the mag. Not a bad looking gun. This thing's pretty beastly. And as you can see right here, it can mop up a couple people if you're behind them. But the thing in the map, well, the point is that this thing is an awesome jack of all trades. You actually see me a couple of times in this video hit firing. This thing isn't that bad at hip firing. I was using a suppressor, a suppressor with hip fire on an LMG and killing people faster. Now, I don't know if it was because of the, the you know, they had lag and I didn't or whatever, but all I know is that this thing was beasting up close and medium range. Um, like I said, for the most part, though, you're not going to be able to win those gunfights against SMGs, assault rifles, anything with a super high rate of fire uh, and, and good hip fire and stuff like that. You're going to lose. And you're going to lose to the long range engagement. Snipers, DMRs now, since they got buffed from complete garbage, they could beat you out at medium, I mean, long range. So what do you got to play? You got to play the medium game. Since this is a jack of all trades, you gotta have to treat this like the if you're playing the assault class and you're using the M416. That's a really good gun because it's a jack of all trades. It's it's good at almost it's okay or the Ace 23. It's good at almost everything, but not great at anything. So you kind of want to play to that, and you want to beat out people at that medium distance that that medium range because that's where you're gonna shine you see in this video all the time that sometimes i get caught up i get caught up up close and personal do that hip fire panic spray but i still do fine because this thing could hold its own it's not gonna beast everything but it'll get you out of a pinch in almost any situation now how am i using this weapon pretty simple i'm burst firing as you can see, as you can see in the background i'm gonna be tap firing any range almost, except for hip firing up close, I'm tap firing, no matter where I am. The accuracy on this thing is phenomenal if you tap fire. I mean, it's not gonna be a laser beam of death, but it almost feels like it. So make sure you're tap firing the entire time you're using this thing. Don't hold on the trigger. I'm telling you, if you hold on the trigger, you basically might as well be shooting straight up in the air. Not because of the recoil's high, but because you're not gonna be landing your shots. It's, I mean, that it's just not gonna happen. So make sure you're burst firing the entire time you're using this weapon, except for up close and personal, because you're gonna get your kills that way. And you don't, the recoil on this thing, the first shot multiplier on this is one. There's, there's none. <laughs> and there really isn't any penalty to continuously burst fire this weapon. You don't need any type of attachment to help with that. And for the most part, you, you're just improving your accuracy, resettling that, that spread and you're making yourself, I mean, you're making yourself a, a much higher accuracy uh, uh, or you're making yourself have much higher accuracy by doing that. So make sure when you do that, actually, you should be doing that with most of your weapons is burst firing. Do not lay on the trigger. If I see you laying on the trigger, I'm going to lay one on your face twice. No pillowcase, no pillow, all that Kevin Hart joke kind of stuff. So make sure you burst firing because I'm going to kick you in your ass if you don't. Now, let's talk attachments. So, now this thing has kind of beast, well, oh, almost okay of everything. What can we add to it? Well, for the most part, I found most success in kind of domination modes with a suppressor on it. The suppressor you saw in the background for a lot of the footage, the suppressor was kind of kicking ass and chewing bubble gum, and it was obviously all out, all out of gum. 
So, um, suppressor really worked, but you don't want to use that in Conquest, in Rush, and stuff like that. Um, be, unless you're like trying to do like a flanking kind of thing with Rush, but for the most part you don't want that because the muzzle velocity goes all the way down to 320 meters per second if you slap on one of those uh, the suppressors. So for the most part, keep a heavy barrel on it. A heavy barrel now got an update so that it gives you uh, better accuracy, sustained fire accuracy. And now that if you're moving, it still keeps a great... Because before, when you were shooting with the heavy barrel, if you moved, boom, done. Might as well throw the heavy barrel away, all those recoil, all that crap for nothing. Now, if you're moving or strafing, it still gives you an accuracy bonus. So use it. You want to make this thing super accurate at, right, at range. Up close, use a laser sight on it. The laser sight helps you out a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be showing you off in the distance and stuff like that. But... For the most part, this is the guy, this is the jack of all trades gun. So make sure you slap it on a laser, slap it on a heavy barrel. And my optic of choice was a Cobra sight. I usually use the Cobra sights on guns that I like to be a little bit more precise with. Um, you'll find me using the uh, the Coyote sight on like the AEK and, and stuff with high rate of fire that I'm not going to be going for super long shots with. But for accuracy stuff, I'm using the Cobra. Cobra's pretty, uh, pretty fly for a Cobra guy. So make sure you slap that on it. Red dot, heavy barrel, and then also slap on a stubby grip to help improve that accuracy. You can use an ergo grip if you find yourself more running and gunning like I was. I probably could have used the ergo grip to add the hip fire, but I found that the stubby grip helped me more on my medium range fights. And I was trying to get myself into more of those situations and not trying to stick to close range engagements. So slap on a stubby grip or potato grip. Yeah, for the win. But you don't get that till later. So slap on. And you know what? Screw it. Slap on the potato grip. Wait for it. Slap it on. Slap it a base. But that's it for this review. I hope y'all liked the change. I liked it a little bit better because, I don't know, it, it feels more natural to talk about how I really feel about the gun. And I don't have to lie and be like, oh, the PP2000 was so good of a gun. Use it because it has 45 rounds in it. Like, it's, no, I'm sorry. The PP2000, it like, it may be nostalgic for you, but I was getting shredded with it. So my personal opinion, my bias opinion, you know, it, it sucked donkey dong. <laughs> so, um... I'm going to be more honest with you guys when doing these reviews. I think there'll be a little bit better uh, turnout if I give you my honest opinion and not just give you with the facts, 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 you know, uh, boring classroom style facts. So if you like this, let me know in the comments below. And as always, stay classy.